It's therefore time for member statements. The member from Nipissing. Thank you and good afternoon, Speaker. I rise today to bring attention to a situation affecting people from all over Ontario, including my home riding of Nipissing. Members of Local 2073 of the Canadian Union of Public Employees are just one of the 24 Canadian Hearing Society offices that have been on strike since May 6th, uh, or March 6th. Across Ontario, nearly 36,000 people use the important services provided by the Canadian Hearing Society. Uh, I visited the uh, members and had opportunity to speak uh, to someone who has been directly impacted by the strike. Uh, I first met him when I was in the mayor's office, and on this particular visit to the, to the uh, line, he explained to me through his sign language interpreter the potential uncertainty he is faced with each day the strike continues. Uh, imagine if this gentleman, who I might add is completely deaf, uh, is rushed to the hospital and is unable to communicate with his doctor in an emergency. The absence of the interpreter and the, uh, his inability to communicate in this case could prove uh, to be potentially fatal. It's a situation that can be easily avoided, Speaker, and should be avoided. Uh, I'm urging the government to reach out and provide any assistance they can to bring an end to this, uh, to this strike. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Windsor to come see. Speaker, I want to send out best wishes today to a friend of mine who's been in a serious car accident. Everyone in Tecumseh and every Legionnaire in Windsor and Essex County knows uh, Len Dupey Sr. Uh, he's led the Colour Party on parade from Legion Branch 261 in Tecumseh for more than 30 years. And Speaker Len is 91. Earlier this month, he was on his way to visit his wife in a nursing home and was in a bad car accident. He went through a stop sign and collided with another vehicle. Fortunately, the young lady driving the other car wasn't seriously injured. Len ended up with a broken neck, broken ribs, clavicle sternum, and some internal bleeding. He was in guarded condition at the ICU for a while, but he surprised his doctors. He's up and walking around, although with a cervical collar. Len thinks he's well enough to go home, but he's still facing six to eight weeks of rehab before he can be released. Speaker. Len was in the Army for a short while until they found out just how young he was, but he got even with the Army. He joined the Air Force, and he served between 42 and 46. We all know him, Speaker, for his big handlebar mustache. Let me correct that, Speaker. Because of that cervical collar, someone in the hospital shaved off that mustache. Speaker, we're all hoping we'll see Len on parade again, leading the Tecumseh Highlanders Color Party. Best wishes for that. And, Speaker, best wishes for the young lady who was treated and released after that accident as well. We'll still make him a member of the uh, Mustache Caucus, just to make sure that you're aware of that. That's a hairy situation. So further member statements, the member from Ottawa, Orléans. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker, it's a pleasure for me to raise, uh, to recognize the work uh, of the Inuit Children's Centre in Ottawa in my writing. Hundred uh, children and youth go to that centre and provide daycare services, and also provide services to adults who wish to return to schools, um, and not many people uh, understand the, the largest uh, number of Inuit outside of Nunavut, and we thank them for their contribution. This center offers, provide various services, help child uh, support, and also, most importantly, cultural education initiatives, among others, uh, the study of Inuktitut. The child care program is very popular, and we now know that they need additional space to really uh, serve the population better. The center supports a family uh, approach with uh, an holistic uh, uh, support toward them and allow them to fully participate in our society. So congratulations, félicitations to the Inuit Children's Center in Ottawa-Vanier. 
Further member statements? Member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today and discuss ALS awareness and the Adaptive Canuck ALS Foundation. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis disease, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, is a rare uh, affliction that gradually paralyzes people when the brain is no longer able to communicate with the muscles in the body. Over time, these muscles break down, leaving patients unable to walk, talk, eat, swallow, breathe, or breathe on their own. Sadly, there's no effective treatments for ALS and no cure. And approximately 80% of people with ALS die within two to five years of being diagnosed. ALS patients can find hope in the Adoptive Connect ALS Foundation. The Foundation's mission is to fundraise in an effort to advance stem cell research that will hopefully unlock a cure for ALS. Adoptive Connect was founded by Jeff Perot, who also suffers from ALS and is run by ALS patients. 100% of the funds they raise goes directly to research, no overhead. The ALS Adoptive Connect have a plan to accelerate the approval of stem cell clinical trials in ALS patients, and they hope to begin earlier this year. This group is championing the federal legislation Right to Try Act. This act, if enacted, would allow ALS patients or any other patients with a terminal illness the right to try unapproved, potentially life-saving treatments in an attempt to improve their condition or expend their time left with loved ones. Speaker, I'd like to tell you about a constituent of mine, Kim Lewis. Kim was diagnosed with ALS a few years ago, but is a director of the foundation. She is currently working hard in Elgin, raising awareness for funds for research into ALS and improve the quality of life of ALS patients. Just last week, I attended the Elmer Strikes Out ALS fundraiser in Central Elgin, organized by Kim and her husband, Spencer. I was incredibly moved by the stories shared that night. I want to thank Kim, Jeff Perot, the Adoptive Canuck ALS Foundation for their continued hard work in increasing awareness around ALS and working towards a cure. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member service, the member for Bramley, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, recent reports indicate that this government was aware a year ago that the vast majority of Ontarians were opposed to the sale of the public electricity system here in Ontario. The problem is that this privatiz privatization discussion isn't limited to the province. More and more, we're hearing discussions around privatization at all levels of government, whether it was, there were discussions with respect to the sale of Toronto Hydro here in this municipality or federally we're now hearing discussions around the privatization of airports and the infrastructure bank which is essentially a veiled attempt at ensuring that all future infrastructure bills are privatized in the future now the issue is that the profit motive while not a problem in a vast number of sectors is an issue when it comes to public services and public infrastructure the reason is mr speaker when it comes to these services if you increase costs if you increase prices it might mean better profits, but it might reduce access. And profit should never be the motive for public services and infrastructure, where the motive should be access, quality, accessibility, and affordability. When it comes to our health care, our education system, when it comes to public transit, we need to ensure that everyone has access to these services, and they have access to quality services. And that's why it's so important, so fundamentally important, that we ensure that all of our public services and infrastructure remain public. Thank you very much. For your member statements, the uh, member from Brampton West. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's a great honour to rise in the House today to speak about the very auspicious occasion of Basaki and the Sikh Heritage Month. April is a month of great significance to the Sikh community. During this month, Sikhs all across the world celebrate Basaki, which marks the creation of Khalsa and the Sikh faith. In Ontario, April is also Sikh Heritage Month. We will be celebrating Sikh Heritage Month here at Queen's Park. The Sikh community, the, uh, the Sikh community will be celebrating the Sikh Heritage Month all across Ontario in many different ways. 2017 is also the year of the 350th anniversary of the 10th Sikh Guru, Sri uh, Guru Gobind Singh Ji. He was a spiritual master, warrior, poet, and a philosopher. He introduced the five articles of faith that Sikhs wear and adhere to at all times. The principle of equality in Sikhism, regardless of one's caste or gender or color, was institutionalized by Guru Gobind Singh Ji. His message to the world is very relevant today. Canada is home to, five, to over 500,000 Sikhs, half of which live in Ontario. Sikhs across Ontario have made important contributions to Ontario's social, economic, political, and cultural fabric. I invite all members of this House to learn more about the Sikh faith 
and to join the Sikh community in celebrating Busaki and the Sikh Heritage Month. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for your member's statements. The member from, from Lambton, Kent Middlesex. Well, thank you very much, uh, Speaker. I'm pleased to welcome the Multi-Employer Benefit Plan Council of Canada to Queen's Park today. They are a non-profit organization that represents the interests of multi-employer plans, and they're here today to raise awareness about what that means. For workers employed in industries typified by small companies or a mobile workforce, such as construction, hospitality, or transportation, to name a few, it can be difficult to maintain consistent benefits or to plan effectively for retirement. By bringing together large numbers of small employers, multi-employer plans support workers and their families with a private sector solution. As our economy and the nature of employment continues to evolve, and as we consider legislative changes related to labour and employment, it's important that we're aware of the diverse circumstances of workers, as well as the private sector initiatives that are emerging or already exist in our province. So I'm pleased the Multi-Employer Benefit Plan Council is here to raise awareness about the unique interests of the workers they cover and to give us some insight into multi-employer plans. The table of stakeholders can be crowded when it comes to labour issues, but it's important that a strong diversity of voices is heard. They will be holding a reception in the dining room tonight, and I encourage all members to attend and to learn more about their important work. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Ancaster, Dundas, Flamborough and Westdale. Uh, thanks, Mr. Speaker. Uh, today, Ontario is leading by example to deliver the next generation of clean technology solutions to help the world fight and adapt to climate change. As our good mayor, Fred Eisenberger of the City of Hamilton, shared with us earlier this week as we toured our local lead build, Harry Howell Arena, quote, communities are implementing a number of programs for both homeowners and organizations to address climate change adaptation. In fact, our region continues to meet targets for reducing energy usage. Speaker, we all have a role to play in the fight against climate change. Leadership shown by the City of Hamilton, as well as their partner organizations, both private and public, are helping to lead that fight. Municipalities such as Hamilton and Burlington are important partners in the fight against climate change. Our government's Climate Change Action Plan provides funding in addition to the already announced $92 million through the Green Investment Fund to improve energy efficiency in social housing apartments and energy retrofits. The Climate Change Action Plan and Cap and Trade Program are the backbone of Ontario's strategy to cut greenhouse gas pollution to 15 per cent below 1990 levels. We're at it. We're going to stick with it. It's a very important task, one we cannot fail at. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Perth Wellington. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Matthew uh, Wakem grew up in St. Mary's and is deeply involved with the St. John Ambulance and Leo and Lions Clubs. In fact, at 23 years old, Matthew has volunteered over 15,000 hours with these organizations. Earlier this month, he was awarded the Sovereign's Medal for Volunteers by Governor General David Johnson. It was well deserved. But Matthew is not doing it for an award or recognition. He's doing it for the right reasons. His comments to the Stratford Beacon Herald reveal his humble attitude. It's nice to get recognized, but definitely not necessary. You're going out there for a purpose, not just to collect hours. I think we can all learn something about the spirit of service and helping our neighbour from this remarkable young man. It speaks well of him, and it speaks well of the spirit of service that is alive and well in Perth, Wellington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's their